Hello and welcome back to my LEGO Castle Kingdom Work in Progress series, where today I'm going to show you the latest addition, which is this medieval farm. This is complete with lots of moving details, including a working windmill, which uses its massive blades to power a grindstone inside, as well as a pair of lumberjacks soaring from side to side as they chop up a log underneath. And of course, I've also decorated the farm with lots of other details, including different varieties of crops, farm equipment, and animals. And I've also made some progress on the mountain where the rest of the castle will go on. I've built up some more of the sides and finished up the path which leads up to the working drawbridge. And I'll show you some more of that later on. But first, let's start by taking a look at the actual farm. So since this is a farm which includes lots of animals such as pigs and chickens, and even some cows dotted around the landscape, I wanted to make sure that everything inside here was nice and fenced in, so nothing would escape. And that's why I've connected this farm to the archery target practice. We have this small stone fence, just a very short one, but high enough to keep everything inside. That even includes this little gate, which can open up, and that's a very cool design, made out of some droid arms, and a paintbrush with the green tip on the end that blends it nicely into the ground and the grass below it. Then you have this stone path which continues along the farm and that will take you all the way to this barn. You can see a child looking out of the barn awaiting the shot of the archer, see if he hits a bullseye. I thought that's a cool little detail. But then over on this other side are the fields. So on the left here are some pumpkins, lettuces, and various other crops and wheat, as well as some grapes on the vine over there for some winemaking. And this little house here, this is a beehive. Well, a wooden beehive, and that is also designed to look like it's a medieval style. Then we have some more of the farmers working on the land, and this ox, which is pulling a plow, so you can see how I built up this harness out of one of these flexible tube pieces, those rubber hoses, and that allows that harness to be clipped around the neck of the ox. And then you can see that harness is in turn attached to a plow, which is neatly plowing the field and making evenly spaced indentations into the soil, ready for even more crops to be planted. The ground rises up past these fields and this raised bit of land gave me a great opportunity to hide up a couple of mechanisms. One of which animates this funny little scene of these two lumberjacks sawing away at that log of wood with their giant lumberjack saw. And I thought that's a really great bit of motion to add to this scene and make use of the existing mechanism which I'd already built for the windmill. Because this is all powered from the same motor, it's just branching out from the mechanism behind it. And I think I've achieved a really cool movement with the two minifigures sliding back and forth. It really looks like they're actually soaring through that piece of wood. Each of these minifigures are attached to a gear rack. So you have one minifigure on either end. That's all built into this part of the hill underneath. And the way I got a continuous rotating motion to go into a back and forth motion is by using a simple contraption made out of some lift arms. And here it is. So basically, this is the driving gear. So that is just going around continuously. And you'll see that activates this crankshaft design, a bit like a piston on the train. And you can see that instead of this gear also continuously rotating in one direction, that actually goes forwards and backwards. And it's a bit easier to see this conversion by using a marker. So you can see more clearly how it goes from one side to the other rather than just continuously around in one direction. And obviously that mechanism combined with the gear rack means that that just pushes it slightly from side to side and creates that really cool moving motion that we'll see if I switch it on. And now we reach the highest part of the hill, we get to the medieval windmill. And I thought this was the perfect location to include a moving windmill and this way each third of the layout includes its own moving element and that balances it out very nicely. 
Compared to the lumberjacks, the windmill is a relatively simple mechanism, but there were still a couple of key things which I wanted to include. One of those being the ability for the windmill to be rotated around 360 degrees in any direction and still function. And that's actually a very realistic design that a lot of real life medieval post mills, as they're called, actually used, where the whole thing could be rotated around to face whichever direction had the strongest wind. And for the second thing, I wanted the mechanism to actually power a grindstone inside, which we can get a very good view of through the doorway, where with each turn of the windmill's blades, the smooth circular stone on the top rolls around along the slightly rougher stone slab on the bottom. So that's what the minifigures use to grind up their wheat into flour. And I thought that was a really neat touch that's definitely worth including because the actual mechanism for this part is just made using some bevel gears positioned at 90 degree angles. And from the back here, we can get a closer look at the actual shaft which powers the windmill. So you can see there's a central shaft which goes down through the ground that's connected to the motor, which goes up through each layer of the mill until it comes out inside this roof section here. And that's all built in, but that's just where some of the bevel gears are. And if I switch the windmill on, you'll see how that shaft starts rotating around. And that basically powers all of the parts of the windmill all at once. So that's a very neat little solution. And then as for this actual mechanism, I've tried to make it so you can see some of it. It's a little bit tricky to access still, but this is the best that I could do in such a compact space. So there you go, that just opens it up a little bit. And you can see just through there that light grey Technic Power Functions motor, along with some gears. And you'll see how that connects to those two bevel gears right in the centre there. So that one on the left goes off to power the lumberjacks, and that one on the right or on the top goes up through that shaft into the windmill. So even though it's a little bit tricky to show how this mechanism all works together, hopefully you at least understand how each of the individual bits work. And before we move on, I'd like to point out the sails on the windmill, which are slightly translucent, so you can see parts of the roof and the building behind them. And I think that's a much better effect than just using plain white panels inside of those windows, because that would look as bright as the horns of the cow, and I think that'd be a bit too overpowering for the colours in this area, and having it slightly translucent makes it look like a relatively thin piece of cloth or fabric that's been stretched over each of these frames. And those panels are actually from the LEGO Ninjago Air Jitsu Temple set, in case you're wondering where I got those from. And also notice how each of these blades are positioned at an angle. Just a slight one, but that's created using the 1x1 one one bricks with the studs on the sides. And that just creates a bit more of an aerodynamic shape, which helps the windmill blades turn a bit better in the wind. So if we continue along the stone path, there's some bushes and some sunflowers made out of some yellow satellite dish pieces. And then this little chicken coop over at the end. That's home to a hen who's protecting her eggs behind her. And the chickens inside are nice and protected from the rain with a simple straw roof. And next to that is the cow pen. So this is home to two cows in a small enclosure surrounded by a wooden fence. And this actually extends to the front of the barn with these two massive barn doors. But that's where the cows can go and stay in the winter, as well as this winch at the top of the barn to transport supplies up to the top for long-term storage, again for the colder winter months of the year. I really like how that blends nicely into the partially wooden structure of the actual barn. And of course, this bit is all a work in progress, so I'm going to fill that up with even more buildings and landscaping later on. So now let's take a look inside the barn. Beginning at the ground floor of the barn, this features the most space for all sorts of storage and equipment, including a wine press in the middle. Because obviously you have the grapes outside here on the vine, 
and they use that to mink into alcohol and wine. So there's that corkscrew design for that press in the middle of the barn, with some more grapes in the barrel there, and even some hay bales made out of all of this straw and wheat growing outside. And there's also some shelves full of a few different preserves and jars, obviously very old fashioned ones, and some jars of honey which come straight from the beehive over here, and then some more fruits and vegetables stored in crates around the rest of the barn. Then on the next and final floor, this is more of an attic than a floor really, but that includes some more storage barrels full of grains and wheat, and this is that control to operate that winch down the bottom, so you can see that just a simple hand cranked system. Then a little cat watching some of the food, and you can see the ladder to get into the attic of the barn. And then this can be completed with the roof, which just slides over the top there, and really fills everything up nicely. And that completes this medieval farm, which I'm really pleased with how everything has come together. All of these warm colours, crops and animals give it a really cosy feeling, which is exactly what I was aiming for. And then the other main thing which I've been working on is the mountain which is connected to the castle gatehouse. And it's a little bit tricky to see with all of these buildings here, so I'll move them out of the way. And if we take a close look at this, you'll see this starts up over at the ground here with this build up of all this rocks and earth that create this path. There's another baby pine tree over there. And then this connects to the blacksmith building, which I've currently removed. And you can see to build up this rock design, I've used lots of dark grey bricks in all different styles, including plenty of plates and rocks at an angle. To create this really natural and jagged rock effect that makes it look like the castle is actually built into the side of the mountain. And that effect will continue as I build more and more of the castle higher and higher up the mountain. Then if we look over the top here, so let's just move the drawbridge out of the way, you can see this is actually a bit of a canyon with the moat down below, and that will lead into a cave. I'll show you where that goes in a little bit. And that's a really cool bit of detailing with these dark green mossy rocks. And that goes especially good with this marbled brick. And you'll see that will basically continue out to ocean. And obviously I haven't made the start on any of the sea just yet, but that's something to do in the future. And I'll probably end up tiling all this over with some kind of either dark blue tiles, like over here, or maybe some of these lighter colours. I'll have to decide what looks best and I'll probably return to that area in the future. And here's what the mouth of the cave looks like from the other side. So you see this area is quite a large space, and I'll eventually build this up into a much larger cavern, or maybe a series of smaller caves, and this was all going to connect up to the mines and the other cave portions of my waterfall. So that's also really exciting, and I can't wait to get around to building that. But for now, that's been all of the new additions to my LEGO Castle Kingdom, and I hope you enjoyed exploring all of these different areas. It's a bit of a variety this time, but I think having the farm over in the corner there is very important to balance the whole layout out, and make sure all of the moving elements are nice and spread out very evenly. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below, and as always, I'm open to ideas and suggestions for what else I should include in my LEGO Castle Kingdom. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you always know when my latest videos are available. I appreciate all of my supporters on Patreon for helping to make my videos possible, and if you'd like to become my Patreon and get access to exclusive bonus videos and many more exciting and exclusive benefits, then the link to join me on Patreon will be in the description, and I'd really appreciate your support. I'll see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.